Welcome those who participate with us to our live stream. So let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
my dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so to prepare ourselves for the secret mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to learn us, us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight make clear, we might rejoice to behold your glory. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust, on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. We respond, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said I am greatly afflicted, Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. 
From the shining cloud the Father's voice is heard, this is my beloved Son, listen to him. Let's stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, his, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could reach them. Then Eli appeared to them among with Moses, and they conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Eli. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them, from the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he taught them not to relate what they had seen and to anyone, except when the Son of Man has risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to, to ask those who have been praying to God so that he would let you win the lottery, uh, even some of you at home, if you, if you have that desire. What if Jesus does let you win the lottery, but then he appears and says to you, burn that ticket. Would you do that? For those of us who have second thought when he commanded us to burn the ticket, perhaps no wonder we haven't won the lottery. My dear brothers and sisters, today the first reading reminding us of Abraham's faith totally trust in God. That when God commanded him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, without hesitation, he intend to obey, he intend to do God's will. And because of that test, that God has rewarded Abraham with numerous children generation like the stars in the, car, the, the sky and the sand and the sea. And so for each one of us, if we too totally trust in God, even when in moments like Abraham, when we do not understand. If that is the case, then we too, one of these days, will receive great reward. Perhaps some of us will say, what about my 
loved one whom just passed away because of COVID. Is there anything else greater to replace them? What kind of reward God gave me for that great pain of loss? My dear brothers and sisters, we are those who have faith in God. Death is part of life. But the greater reward that we might not have seen is eternal life, heaven. In some way, that is very similar to what Abraham had go to. At that very moment, without reservation, sacrifice his son. Without fully understand what is it that God wants to that action. And in very similar way, we cannot understand why God called our loved one home. Perhaps some very young, with a full future ahead, with a lot of ambitions, a lot of things that he or she will be able to do for our community, for our family, for our church, for our country. And yet, those are the moment too that we are like Abraham, do not fully understand, but that we have to fully trust in God. Our way, our desire, our need, our want, sometimes does not go according to His. And in that case, we too need to come to Jesus Christ, spend more time with Him, talk to Him. Say to Jesus Christ, Jesus, I am here to seek your will, to understand your will. Often the tendency is that we come to complain. Why? And of course, sometimes I also do that too. You know, when things doesn't go my way, especially, you know, when... I tried to build more houses in Vietnam for the elderly. And then when they, the government prevented me from doing so, I come to Jesus Christ and, you know, I, I am angry at him and I said, why didn't you intervene? I am doing something good for those vulnerable that you are telling me to care for. And of course, those are the moments that I am not seeing his will. I'm not seeing a bigger picture that he has for me and for us. And that is why afterward. I said to Jesus Christ, Jesus, I am sorry because I have doubted you. I come to seek your will. Help me to understand your will. And of course, like Abraham, why did he intended to do God's will, even knowing that that is his only son, the one that he has been waiting for, and God is the one that promised them both. By the time of this year, you will have a son. Why did he did not hesitate and yet obey completely? It is because he recognized that Isaac is a gift that God has given it to them. And so in that case, God is the one that gave Isaac. And so now God is the one that wants Isaac back. He can't complain. He can't say to, you, to God, why? Because God is the one that gave. For each one of us, it is the same. Our life, our wealth, our health, all the things that we have 
Are they not being given to us by God himself? If we become so arrogant to say, I earn those things. My career, the power, the wealth, all the things I earn. If we say that, then no wonder when those things are no longer there for us, we resent God. And even worse, sometimes we deny Him, we betray Him because we say, why did you do that to me? Why did you take those things away from me? As though we have earned it fully. Not really. God is the one that gave it to us. And so when it is time for Him to call us to give back or to share, we should do that gladly. Knowing that those things have been given to us, even our life. Your husband, your wife, your children, your grandparents, your loved one, all of them have been given to you. And so one of these days, when God called them home, we do not understand why, but we have to believe that God has given them to us for a moment in time, and we often have to blame ourselves because we did not take the, that opportunity to care for them, to love them, to spend more time with them. That is on us, not on God. And so that is why especially those of us who have someone that we need to take care of at this very moment because they are ill, they are getting older, they are gifts that God has given and has entrusted to us. Love them, care for them. Because perhaps tomorrow we will no longer have them with us. And so that is why. As today, God used the reading to remind us that we need to imitate Abraham. Totally have that faith in God, even in those moments that we do not understand why. That we need to continue to trust, because imagine if Abraham did not obey. He would fail, and perhaps Isaac will die anyway. Because our human way of seeing things, of viewing things, is not His. And that is why, if we notice those who have won the lottery, how many of them are still happy, how many of them family are still together. The majority have lost more when they won the lottery than before. Those are examples for us to fully understand that when we ask for something, God does not give it to us, not because He doesn't care, but that He knows better. He sees things that we cannot comprehend. And so that is why the most important thing of all is that we continue to have faith in Him, especially when we don't understand what is happening or when we sing, see things that are happening but it's not what we want. That is not what we ask for. Then we need to return to Jesus Christ to understand His will and always ask Him for strength. Give me the strength, the courage, to carry that cross, to embrace what you have in trust to me. And when we are persistent, when we have tried our best, 
greater things will happen in our life. I remember when I was in the seminary, my own spiritual director is the one that tell me I don't have a vocation to the priesthood. But I did not listen to him. Because at the end of the day, when I came to Jesus Christ, I always feel that inner peace, that joy. And so because of those things, I said to Jesus Christ, I said, well, you know, you are all powerful, almighty. If you don't want me to be here, you could always appear and tell me directly. But that is because I spent time with him. And he gave me that sign, that joy, that inner peace. Yes, I continue to struggle. They continue to make my life more difficult. But it's okay because at the end of the day, I come to Jesus Christ and I say to Jesus, Jesus, I have that joy. I have that inner peace. And so for us, it's the same. When we seek his will, those are two signs that we're able to recognize that that is what God is wanting us, despite we don't like it, despite we see the difficulty to struggle ahead. That joy, that inner peace. And of course, when I have to make difficult decisions, I often spend time in front of the tabernacle. There are nights that I sleep in the chapel to say to Jesus Christ, Jesus, this is what I am about to do. If this is your will, then tomorrow morning when I wake up, I will feel this inner peace, this joy in my life. Then I know that is what you want me to do. But if tomorrow morning when I wake up, if I feel doubt, if I, have, if I am anxious, if I am worried, if I have new insight, then I know what I am going to do is not your will and I will continue to seek your will. And that is what I have to do, especially when it's affecting others, when important decision. And so for us, it's the same. When God has given you a cross to carry, if we doubt, if we wonder, that is okay. But come to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, is it this the cross that you want me to carry? If it is, give me strength to continue to carry that cross. Give me joy. Give me peace. I am not asking you to take that cross away. I'm asking you for strength. I am asking you for sign so that I know that is your will. And he will always give us a sign so that we know that that is his will. And he will always give us the strength to carry that cross. I always believe that. And always, he gave me strength. And of course, I am standing here today, this very moment, with an example of that. Because if I doubt, I would laugh already. Because my own spiritual director is the one that tells me that. You don't have the vocation to the priesthood. But I am here. I am standing here. And so that is why it is very important that we continue to come to Jesus Christ, not to complain, complain, not to get angry at him, not to blame him for things, but that to seek his will and then try our best to be faithful, walk toward that path that he is leading us. And of course, when we wrap his hand, we can't get lost. Despite the things that are around us, it's tempting us, but if we hold his hand, we are okay. No matter what. And if there are times that we, you need to close your eyes so that you don't need to see all the things that are distracting you, tempted you to go astray, close your eyes, trust in him. The way Abraham have do so. And of course, he has received his reward. And we too, one day, will also receive our reward.
Let's stand. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Aware that everything belongs to the Lord, we present this, our prayers, as a living sacrifice to our loving God. Grant Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and all the deacons, the trusting faith of Abraham and the blessings unto all nations. We pray to the Lord. For our troubled world, may God stay the hand of violence and destruction, especially in Nigeria, China, Ethiopia, and the streets of America. We pray to the Lord. As we have celebrated the birth of Presidents Washington and Lincoln, that our president, governors, congressional leaders, and all elected officials may be true to our Constitution, the rule of law, honest elections, and the common good, we pray to the Lord. For those adversely affected economically by the COVID plague, may they soon find gainful work, prospering business, and the ability to the ability again to serve our communities. We pray to the Lord. For those who have the power to open schools, such as school boards and school districts and unions, may they think first of the children. We pray to the Lord. That St. Mother Teresa Respect Life Ministry may touch the hearts of our local community, especially our own parishioners, to still the hands of violence against children, both born and pre-born, and open their minds to truth. We pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for this sacrifice of the Eucharist, may we, may we each offer our time, talent, and treasure to God by paving the way to heaven. We pray to the Lord. For Evangeline Agigam, for whom this Mass is offered, that God grant her the grace to find the way through death to new life, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, Jesus is the lasting revelation of your love. As you help us to hear your word and put into practice, grant our needs which we ask in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus on the mountain peak stands alone in glory blazing. Let us, if we dare to speak, join the saints and angels praising. Praise and glory, praise and glory, praise and us if we dare to speak join the saints and angels praising Jesus is the chosen one living hope of every nation hear and heed him everyone sing
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the mighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. For all, for after he has told his disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifests to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, with our end, we are claimed. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dew fall, so that they might become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and one more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, we celebrate the moment of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and shall salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body blood of Christ, we might be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our Beto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin Mary, mother of God, St. Joseph, all the apostles, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we might must be called heir to eternal life and my praise and glory you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, the mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As our Savior command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. The Lord Lord to pray from every evil and gracefully grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, and we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us bow our head as a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Let all of us respond together. The body of Christ.
la lazio that we receive this glorious mysteries we make thanksgiving to you O lord for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven to christ our lord please be seated Thank you for joining uh, us for our Mass in person and by live stream. Don't forget to check out our bulletin. It's available after Mass or on our website at btocchurch.org. Please pay special attention to Monsignor's column on confession and the Knights of Columbus Wahoos fundraiser. Al Castro, president of the Filipino ministry, will now make a short announcement on our golf tournament. Well, is everyone happy uh, being back inside the church rather than sitting outside doing the canopy? I am. Okay, uh, something else will, is going to make us all happy, I hope, today. Uh, my name is Al Castro, uh, coordinator for the Filipino ministry. Uh, once again, the International Alliance Golf Club of San Diego, working in collaboration with the Filipino ministry, of St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, is sponsoring its fourth annual golf fundraising tournament. Uh, it will be held at the uh, Temecu Hills, the Legends Golf Club of Temecu Hills in Rancho, California, on March 27, 2021. I'm sure you all know that last year wasn't a good year uh, for all of us in terms of uh, church fundraising. Other than the uh, Knights of Columbus who did their Christmas tree lane fundraising in December, I don't know of any ministry who did it. Uh, not even our major fundraising event of the year that takes place in September, the gala event. We canceled that because of COVID restrictions. Halfway uh, during my preparation last year for my golf fundraising tournament, I had to cancel it because of the pandemic. Uh, luckily, uh, however, uh, I have some good-hearted people, both sponsors and players, who decided not to be reimbursed with the money that they paid. And instead, they told me to give it to the church. So I was able to muster close to $3,000 and gave it to the church. So you know why we are doing this again. Perhaps you may know that the church is struggling to meet its financial, not obligation, because Marta corrected me earlier, uh, struggling for financial uh, needs in the church uh, because of missed fundraising opportunities last year. And number two, uh, I understand that there's a dramatic decrease in the money collection during masses. So I think that uh, it's time for us to do something together collectively, hoping that we could make up for the missed fundraising opportunity that we could have had last year. Now, to have a golf tournament, we needed players. I know we have some players in our church. And I don't, I don't have no problem finding players. Between LA and San Diego, I could get up to 70 players. But any tournament uh, coordinator will tell you that the, the bulk of fundraising doesn't come from the tournament fee. It comes from the sponsors, okay? So <clears throat> with, that, with that in mind, uh, and I, I, I don't want to penalize the players for saying that because I said what I said, and here is why. Uh, I collect $100 for the tournament fee from the players. $55 goes to the pro shop. $10 goes to their lunch, their snacks, and water. 
So what is left is that what, what we make. So now you know how important that you all are being one of our sponsors. So my challenge to you is to make this as a one-time commitment. After all, it would be a win-win situation. Net proceeds of this fundraising goes to our building fund. The Filipino ministry doesn't get a single penny. Okay. So uh, having said that, uh, on the way out, uh, there would be the officers and members of the Filipino ministry will be handing out uh, sponsorship forms. And you can do in many ways. You can sponsor in many ways. You can do a trophy sponsor. You could do a lunch sponsor, uh, most accurate drive, uh, bottled water, and uh, for many, probably going to be sponsoring hole, sponsor uh, one of the 18 holes. And if you do sponsor one of the 18 holes, I will prepare a sign that I will put to one of the 18 holes, and you can tell me which, which hole you want. And it will say, this hole is sponsored by, this was done last, time, last year by Detailed Building Services. Or maybe you could say, this hole is sponsored by uh, John Hosey and wife. Or Sam and Karen Abrahamian. Because those guys have been sponsored last year. <clears throat> so, uh, what do you think? Is that a good idea? Good idea? Does everybody know what's the uh, Nike logo? I mean, Nike slogan? Nike slogan, what, what is it? Let's do it, there you go. Okay, so on your way out, uh, please don't walk by the others or members of the Philippine ministry. Get one of those forms. And there's a pre-address envelope where you could put it in and mail it back to me. And, uh, or you can bring it next Sunday. Okay, thank you very much. We have upcoming Lenten pendant services at St. Mother Teresa on Friday, March 5th, 6.30 p.m. in Spanish. Monday, March 8th, 5 p.m. in English. Also Saturday, March 13th at 9.30 a.m., we will have extra priests available for confessions after the 8.30 a.m. Mass. Bilingual English and Spanish priests will be available on all three dates to hear confessions. St. Mother Teresa Catholic Men's Fellowship Group is holding a drive through food drive on Saturday, March 6th from 9 a.m. through 1 p.m. in the church parking lot by the lower gate. This is a great opportunity to help those in need this Lenten season. Please bring only canned and dry goods, no perishable items. Thank you for your generosity. Friday, March 5th is the first Friday. Eucharistic Adoration will be held after the 8.30 a.m. Mass. Due to the evening penance service on the 5th, Adoration in Spanish will be held on March 12th. Please join us for Stations of the Cross this Friday at 6 p.m. in English or 7 p.m. in Spanish. Don't forget Meatless Fridays during Lent. Catholics age 14 and older are to abstain from meat on all Fridays in Lent. This is also opportunity to support KOC Knights of Columbus, Wahoo's Lenten fundraiser. A copy of the flyer is in this week's bulletin. As a reminder, if you may have been exposed to COVID, please stay home. Even if you do not have any symptoms, please get tested after possible exposure. And if you are ill in any way, please remain home until you are recovered. We want to be able to safely continue in-person masses throughout the winter season. Again, thank you for joining us today. We would appreciate your patience as you wait for the ushers to dismiss you. Please exit through the side doors of the church. Do not exit through the narthex as parishioners will be entering through the front entrance. Have a blessed week. Let's keep each other in prayer. And we are looking forward to seeing you online or in person next Sunday as we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. I'd uh, like to take this opportunity to thank all the parents, young parents, for bringing your children. I know it is not easy, uh, but please continue to bring uh, our children to Mass. This is where they learn about Jesus Christ, especially where they observe how we love, how we care for one another. i also like to thank all of those who are outside, because we didn't have enough space inside, 
So thank you for that. And so our young children and those uh, outside will have a special blessing, but they all must stand for our final blessing, bow our head for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they might always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty you, he saw in his own body and the amazement of his apostle to Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of mighty God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.